Okay. Um, our next topic would be uh, M zero nine problem metadata. We will talk about uh, some um, problem you may encounter when you analyze um, different data. Okay. So the first one is missing value. Okay. Um, take a look at the right hand side right here, and uh, um, usually we have several different. Um, features x1 to xn, right? And we have n data point. And sometimes some value, okay, no matter how, it is not there. Okay? So it is a missing value. So um, now some strategy to uh, input this value. For example, um, we have x bar, uh, x2 bar here. So uh, you can input mean value in this cell, right? And of course, okay, since we have the entire x2, you have n data points, right? You can calculate the median value, the mode value, or mean value. So we replace this missing value, okay? Um, sometimes, okay, if you know what exactly x2 is, for example, it is a salary, okay? Or some other um, data, you know it has a proper fixed value, which is good, okay? You can use this fixed value. Or sometimes you simply just use zero to represent, okay, I don't know what exactly is, okay? Because most of the time, um, our model, okay, for example, A model like this okay if you simply just uh, input the missing value for example right here that means I want to evaluate or I would like to predict Y without using B X2 okay but it's it is a little bit dangerous to do so because um, it, it is not uh, because sometimes B, uh, X2 is an important um, feature to predict Y but you simply just um, ignore it um, that is a missing value. And there's another way to do, uh, to input the missing value is that um, you can simply just use the distance function we introduced before, okay? So we can calculate the distance between the data point number three and uh, the, the distance between data point number three and all the other points. So you may figure out that, okay, data point number two is close to number three. So you can use the value of number two to as the input, of, uh, as, the num as the number of uh, this missing value. It is okay, so uh, you can use the nearest neighbor. Okay, and again, you can use k nearest neighbor to figure out, uh, for example, three, or five or seven nearest neighbor to number three. And they use those value, use the neighbor's x2 value to replace the missing value. Okay, there's uh, some uh, nice method to, um, to input the value. Or, okay, or you can use x1 x3, x4 to xm, and y to predict x2. You can use another model to do so, so that you can input x2. It is sometimes a good uh, ad hoc method to do, to, do uh, to, um, to input missing value. Okay, it's just some um, straightforward method to do so. Okay. Uh, in uh, neural network, we will talk about how to do, uh, how to perform missing value by using neural network approach. Okay, but here we introduce some uh, straightforward method. Okay, uh, the next one is imbalanced data. Okay, uh, for example, um, take a look at y. If y is a categorical data uh, target, okay, and we simply just calculate that the number of zero and one, okay, by using y, okay? If it 
is imbalanced. For example, it is twelve to one. Okay, so the number of zero is uh, is larger than one. Okay, and we will call it imbalanced data. And uh, um, because for some algorithm, okay, for example, if you if you simply just um, ignore such kind of uh, imbalanced data, okay, some algorithm, some classification algorithm might try to output y hat. For example, um, o y hat r zero. Some, you know, bad classification algorithm may do so. Even they do so, the accuracy is still that high, right? Because out of 13 data points and 12 of them are zero. And if all, if a bad classification algorithm, it outputs y hat all zeros. And the accuracy is still high, but it is not what we want, right? So we have to deal with the imbalanced data before we analyze those data okay so first one is called random over sample and we can simply just use um, uh, let's take a look at uh, this one okay um, we are t we manually create um, imbalanced data okay and we use logical regression to help us to classify the imbalanced data and right here we can see that okay we have three different numbers right here it indicate we have one percent and one percent and 98 percent of data okay so apparently 98 percent of data are in yellow and the other one is green and the other one is purple okay so if you do nothing you simply just use a regular expression i'm uh, sorry use a Logistic regression to classify this data. This the the result will be like this one, okay. And here we increase the proportion of um, I think uh, green, okay, to five percent, and that is the result. And then so on and so forth, so on and so forth. So as you can see, if the proportion of one class, okay, is quite small or two of class is quite small. The classification, the, the boundary line, okay, made by logistic regression would be so bad, okay? That is uh, the reason why we need um, to do, uh, to, perf to perform some algorithm before uh, we apply classification algorithm on imbalanced data, okay? So um, one thing is that, um, Random over sample is so, uh, it's, I think it's right here. We have a um, package to help us to do so. So you simply just, okay, initialize a random sampler, okay? So um, that is a result, okay? Uh, the idea is that, okay, for those green points, okay? I think right here and right here, right here, okay? Um, the random over sampler, okay, they were trying to create more data point, okay, nearby the original green point. And for this purple point, okay, we try to randomly generate more points. So after that, the logistic regression will be affected by the new, gener new generated data point. So the boundary line may move, okay? May move toward a proper place like this one. The reason why we use um, logistic regression right here is because the the function okay the the logistic regression is that looks like this one right D looks like this one right and the 
um, for a logistic equation, its loss function is maximum likelihood. Likelihood will go over the in entire will go over the entire data set. So if you have more points within the data point, even though it was imbalanced, but after you perform random over sampler, okay, it will create more data points around your original data point for those uh, data point who, who is imbalanced, okay? And since the definition is right here, right? So if you have more point, okay, the boundary line will be moved toward, okay, to the from for, for example, from the, to this place and to this place, to here and here. That is the reason why you we use um Altruist regression to demonstrate in this case. Okay, if you use algorithm like SVM. As we understand, SVN only draw the boundary line depending on the support vector, right? So if um, the new generated random point is not one of the support vector and the SVN will not move his boundary line, but in logistic regression, it will move if you provide more random uh, over sample nodes, uh, data points. Okay. Okay. So, um, that is, and again, okay. We have several different, uh, we say, um, strategy right here for random over sample. There are several different strategy to uh, generate those new data points. And as we can see that, uh, for the smooth, uh, right here, I see. There is a parameter right here. Okay, we call this smooth bootstrap. Okay, it will generate some data point right here around the. You can, you can see that. Okay. You can compare it with the uh, normal strip. It will create some points. Okay. Between the. Between the old. Original point. Okay, so that's. Uh, it really doesn't matter uh, what kind of strategy you use, okay? So uh, basically, uh, when we, be honest, okay, when we use such kind of uh, sampler, we simply just use automatic strategy, okay? But you can try some other strategy, okay? Okay. And there are two, uh, and two other uh, algorithms that deals with imbalanced data, okay? ADASIN and the SMOT is mode, okay? So uh, we will not go over the algorithm, okay? Because um, it is too complex, but we simply just show you how it works, okay? So at the left hand side, okay, we can see the original data point and we can use the oversampler, okay? To generate some data points. But I think, um, Okay. Okay. And two different data points, uh, two different uh, up sampler. Okay. Just try to feel, okay, how it generates new points. Okay. And most of the time, as you can see, that it, there's several lines, some, some lines right here. Okay. That means it's use the old data point. Okay. And connect them together. Okay, connect this, this line to this line together to generate new data points. Okay, there are some randomness in Edison and Smote, and uh, simply just uh, try, try them. Okay, we will pass the algorithm. Okay. So after you use uh, Edison or Smote and without sampler, and we can see that there's a, the SV the logistic regression boundary line. Okay, moves to some proper place. Okay. 
Okay, that is another example. Okay, we it's a more complex example. Okay, and it shows the that that is the original point. Okay, that is the point made by SMOT, and that is the point made by Elasin. Okay, and uh, the corresponding boundary line would be right here and here and here. Okay. It, uh, be honest. Uh, th th there's no. Uh, um, it's really depend on you, you. I mean, uh, the program writer to try different uh, samples because uh, we we don't know what is the distribution of your or your original data. So we don't know which uh, algorithm we better to up to do to perform up sampling. So we just provide um, several different algorithms. You have you must you must you must try. By yourself, okay. So that is, okay. We have more example. Okay, so that is the up sample loop. Okay, so uh, make sure you you have you you don't have you do not have any missing data and you have too many. Uh, you, you if your data is imbalanced, you to try those uh, up samplers. Okay, and next one is that uh, we have talked about this outlier before. Okay, if you have some data point right here. And ideally, you should create a linear regression line like this. But you have a outlier right here, and it will create an appropriate, inappropriate uh, linear regression line. So before you perform any algorithm, you should try to remove any outliers you can find. Okay, there's some some. Um, good ways to remove them okay the first one is from the statistics okay we have x value which is um, a feature and as you can see uh, most of the time we assume the uh, distribution of a uh, feature is normal distribution so basically you can calculate the z value the score value by using this one okay a value right here okay right here minus its mean value okay its mean value and divide it by its standard deviation and you can get the z score okay from the uh, assumption of normal distribution if your z score is larger than three or less than minus three that means your data will be a little bit far away from the mean value okay because 99.7 okay 99.7 percent 99.7 of all the data will be within plus three and minus three so that standard deviation standard deviation okay so if you your data point okay xi is larger than that or less than that then we consider it is this value xi is uh outlier okay that is one of the uh one of the way we identify different outliers okay and the other one is uh is that plus plugs plugs okay um again okay we have x1 right here and you can draw a bar plugs again we will show you it later in orange as well okay so basically, and again, we, we should have a mean value right here, okay? And sometimes mode value, okay? And uh, uh, the uh, mean value, okay? And the Q1 and Q3. Q1 is the 25% percentile, okay, of the data. And 75 would be 75, Q3, okay, percentile. So uh, again, very similar to this score, most of the data will be locate, okay, will be right here, okay? And again, uh, there's another way to calculate outlier, which is right here. First, we use Q3 minus Q1 to obtain IQR, and we use 1.5 IQR, okay? So, Right here, the Q1 is right here, right? 
you go this way, okay, that is 1.5 IQR, and you from Q3, okay, you go this way, 1.5 IQR. And it, it says that um, no more data point would be within this range. So if your data is larger than 1.5 IQR plus Q3, or less than 1.5 IQR, uh, that's uh, below Q1. Okay, those definitions right here. You might be a outlier, an outlier. Okay, that's another another way to do so. The next one is PCA based. Based. Okay, so let's try here. Again, okay, we have several different. We have um, several different data points right here, okay? Wait a moment, okay? Please wait a moment. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, if you use a matrix, okay, to convert the original X to a new space, PC space, okay, as we mentioned before, we can simply just uh, use a value right K right here, okay, so. Originally, it is uh, M dimension, right? But we now use K dimension to transform the original data to a principal component space, okay? And with only K dimension, so that is. So uh, when, when you do such kind of um, transformation, um, I think all the data in the original space, so that is original space, and that is the PCA space, okay? Um, if there are certain items, uh, d data, okay, which is considered an outlier, for example, right here, number three. And uh, um, as we mentioned before, when you do such kind of transformation, the total variance, okay, will be the, will be the same because we simply just rotate the data, right? So all the, uh, the relationship between each data point uh, it's not uh, does not change it right does not change so um, the variance is the same right and we enforce that VPC1 will be largest one so if we use PCA to transform all the data points from the original space to the PCA space, and if it is an outlier, the outlier will be very, we say, um, you can observe this outlier more easily in PC1, PC2, and PC3. Because PC, the, the PC1, PC2, and PC3, they have largest var variance, and the variance in space means uh, it's related to distance. So if an outlier, which is far away from the other data points, and you transform it by using PCA, and in a new space, the, the distance between the outlier and the, for example, the central E of the data point will be larger in PC one, two, three space. Because the variance will be, is uh, redistributed to PC1, PC2, and PC3, the, the spaces in, in, in the uh, PC1 to PCK. Okay? So that is just uh, another way to help us to specify. So uh, you can uh, try to um, use these score or bot plugs to on 
PC space, not X space. It'll be much easier for you to find those outliers. Okay, and uh, uh, we'll skip the SVM this one. Okay, so that is how it works. And the next one is called PLS. It is an um, interesting, uh, in interesting algorithm. Okay, but it is a little bit difficult to comprehend. So uh, let's try. Okay, the formula is this one and this one. Okay, as we mentioned before. Okay, um, X big X. Okay, it has n data point and is m dimension because it has m features right and for y usually it should be n times one right the shape is n and one that means in y we have only one value but but um in in data analysis it, it is not necessary to be only one y value okay so it could be a matrix which is fine. That means you have multiple tasks, so you can output multiple y when you do prediction by using x. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It, it, this value could be larger than one. Okay, so both x and y are matrix. Okay, they present the original data, right? So that is x and y. And as we as we um, as we demonstrate that. Um, a matrix can be divided into two different metrics and times them together. So right here, T is the shape is N times K and the P transpose the shape is K times N. So as you can see that if we times T and P transpose, okay, this, we can remove this one. So the shape is still N times M, right? And uh, uh, from the perspective of mathematics, mathematics, okay, there should be infinite pair of T and P transpose to create such X because it represents. Okay, we simply just ignore E and F right right now. Okay, but because it simply just represent different point of view when you observe the data x, right? So if t is a projection and p is the way how you rotate your data. So the, we, we have several different ways to rotate your data, right? So basically you, you can have enough um, infinite pair of t and p to represent x. And again, you have infinite pair of u and q transpose to represent y okay so p and q are how did you rotate your data okay and t and u would be the projection of the date of the data okay and x and y is the original space okay. and again t and p uh sorry um Again, um, for this uh, algorithm, PLS, partial list square regression, okay? Again, we do uh, interesting things that uh, right here. Although there are lots of uh, pairs of T and P and U and Q, but we enforce, okay? We we'll, we'll like to find the T and U which they have maxima covariance. Okay, so if X and Y has certain relationship, okay, but that relationship is not quite obvious. So how about we transform the original X and Y by using P transpose and Q transpose to transform them to another new space or say projection which is t and u and t and u has maximized covariance okay but when we do such kind of transformation okay the transformation may not be that perfect so we add the arrow 
okay on each side okay e and f okay so if the trans transformation of p and q is so perfect and t and u has maxima covariance for data point okay e and f sorry for data point x and y they may not need e and f to correct this formulation e and f means error okay if x and y has a lot of noises in x and y so we cannot find a perfect transformation t and u by using p and q and there should be lots of errors should be added to tp and uh, uq so that we can get x and y if x y has a lot of noise so that we cannot find the perfect t u okay so by using this uh, algorithm we we simply just calculate this value okay so if a node uh, sorry if a, a, a data point who has large e and large f that means we cannot easily use p and q to transform x and y to t and u we need some other e error correction and f error correction to do so so in this case okay we can simply just skip this one okay that is an example okay so we can see that there's some um, data point right here they have large errors because most of the data point can easily be transformed to T and U, they don't have large E and F. Okay, so by using this way, we can try to find the, the, the data point who has large errors and try to upload them, try to figure out them. But there's one thing you have to uh, do by yourself that is um, where you should consider uh, who, uh, where is the threshold you set okay so that you can uh, differentiate uh, outliers and uh, normal data points but that is one of the way to do so okay to help you to find those um, outliers okay so and again um, we have PCA so we simply just perform PCA okay so after you perform PCA we simply just uh, for example find some um, k value okay right for example right k value right here so you can map your data from original space to uh, pc pc1 and pc2 and as you can see that because pc1 and pc2 has largest cumulated uh, variance so some data point may be may jump out okay because we can observe those data those outlier data points more easily in pc space so uh, that is the first uh, topics. Okay, we stop right here and we continue uh, in next video.